Sticking with the Japanese Canada concept idea, we're moving on to the pants. Because I had to sew this for work, I couldn't deviate from the pattern too much to replicate the type of pants in this illustration, so I'm making more of the traditional Hakama pant. The pattern is still McCall 7525, and I'm not doing anything too fancy this time like I did with the sleeves, so it's much more straightforward. With right sides together, sew the front of the Hakama pants together, reinforcing the lower part with extra stitching as that gets the most wear and tear. Here I've marked the front pleats with two colors of pins, and I'm going to use my pleating method. Green for go, red for stop. Pull the furthest green pin towards the next pin, which is red. Pin that pleat together. Take the next green pin and pull it to the next pin, which is red. Pin that pleat together. Finally, pull the last green pin to the last red pin. Anchor those together. Repeat this method of doing the pleats on the other side of the pant front. Press with your iron and baste the pleats at the top. Here's a closer look at the pleats. Baste the fold close to 3 inches from the top to help keep them in place. Time for something not found in traditional comma pant, but is needed at all cons. Pockets. Cut out your pocket fabric. Cut two of your fabric and two of a lining. Clip your alignment markers. Fold and press the curved side of both of the front pocket facings. Line them up with the straight edge of the pocket, and sew around it to secure it for both pockets. With right sides together, line up the straight edge of the pocket with the angled part of the front pant. Sew along the one straight edge. Once that's sewn, flip it onto the inside of the pant and press with your iron. Top stitch the straight edge several times to secure the pocket in place. Next, fold sew, and press the curved side of your pocket lining. Right sides together, sew around your pocket. I did two rows of stitching to enforce the seam and then serged it. Base the top edges and along the side pocket of the pant. Repeat the pocket instructions for the other side. Sew the two back pieces together, reinforcing the curve with more stitching just like the front. Fold and iron the back pant facing just like the pocket facing was, and sew the fold down this time. Right sides together, sew along the straight edge as you did from the front. Once that's sewn, flip and press. Repeat the multiple top stitching rows as well. Do this for both sides. Now comes the tricky part. I'm going to switch up my pleat method only for these steps as it makes it a slight bit easier to understand. It took me a few tries to even understand what I was supposed to do. Fold 1 and Fold 3 are marked with green pins. The fold two is marked with red. Starting near the center, pull the first green pin and pull it past the center seam to the next green pin. Anchor that pleat.
Next, take the red pin and pull that pleat over past the green pin and over to the red pin. Anchor that together. Lastly, pull the last green pin and pull it past the red pins to the original green pin goal. Base and press these pleats in place. Before going any further, I decided to add a leaf with heat and bond for the front of the pant. I'm undecided whether it will stay or not, but it's fine for now. With right sides together, sew front and back of the pants together along the sides. Making the straps. Right sides together, sew the ends together. Once those are sewn, I've used pins to mark where the opening of the band will be. Sew around the rest of the strap. Trim the excess of the seam allowances and flip the strap to the right sides out. As previous cosplay projects, I've just treated the front straps like a large bias tape and sewed it closed on both right and wrong sides. With wrong sides together, fold along the line indicated. Base the raw edges together and press with your iron. Place the triangles on either end of the back piece and base around those same edges as before. To make the back straps, with right sides together, sew along two long edges and one of the short edges. Once flipped and pressed, line up the raw edges to the sides of the back waistband. Base those together. Once you've sewn the two back waistband pieces together, flip them right sides out. For the interfacing insert, I use some plastic canvas that is often used in crafting. I cut out the sheath that was required and inserted it into the back waistband piece. Once there, I sewed the outer piece with the machine and I slip stitched the inside. The last thing you need to do is to hem the bottom of the pants, but after all we just went through to make these, that's the easiest step. There's still a lot I need to do and construct for this costume, but I'll post those videos once I find the material and the time. Until then, 